But without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's jump right into the damn reactions. Now, shout out to Sunny B too. We've gotten a chance to talk about different things on here, but you know, we especially with comedians with with Cat Williams, we're gonna talk about the most hated and the most loved comedians. DC's Pizza Slap. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get into this damn video, y'all. Let's do it. For every five admired comedians, there's another five who are completely despised. And it's no secret that joke thief Dane Cook fits snugly in a category too. In 2005, Dane Cook was listed as the world's most famous comic, although despite being known by an audience of millions, he was notably hated by every other comedian. A comedy radio host stated, Not one comedian comes on my show and says I'm so happy for him, which is weird. They can't stand this poor guy, the reason for which being jealous at least according to Dane. A lot of jealousy, a lot of animosity that I, at a young age, was famous, hanging around with beautiful women, rich. Although the real reason might have been because Dane had stolen their jokes, given he was called out for copying a bit done by Louis C.K. You can name your kid anything you want. I like that part. I'd like to give my kid an interesting name, you know? Like a name with no vowels, maybe, you know? Sure <laughs> Just like 40 Fs, that's his name. I already have names picked out, I don't even know. First kid, boy, girl, I don't care. The first one that comes out, I'm naming it. I think it's beautiful. It's feminine, but strong at the same time. Time for bed. I said time for bed. Fans then noticed Dane had also copied a bit by Dimitri Martin at around the same time. I went into a shoe store and I said, uh, hey, can I get those in a 10? The guy said, sure, and he went in the back. And a couple minutes later he came out and he goes, I don't have a 10, I have a nine. Great. Because while you were in the back, my toes were severed off. She walks out. She comes up to me, you guys, so enthusiastic, such like optimism. She's holding a boot. She comes right up to me and she goes, um, we have it in nine. <laughs> Great, you guys also have a bone saw anywhere nearby? With Patrick CC running through even more examples in this video before oh, touching yeah. on another reason Dane Cook is hated. His joke about the Batman movie theater shooting. So I heard that uh, the guy came into the theater about 25 minutes into the movie. I don't know if you've seen the movie. The movie's pretty much a piece of crap. Pretty sure that somebody in that theater about 25 minutes in realizing it was a piece of crap probably was like, oh, f shoot me. The controversial joke resulted in article after article very insensitive. Yeah, he was the one that said that. I heard that joke before, but I didn't put the name name with the joke. Highly insensitive, gang. That's insensitive as hell. Fudge. Okay, this joke had me side eyeing him. Yeah, like that's a mean by that? As well as Twitter posts reading, anyone who knows me knows I think Dane Cook is the single worst comedian ever. He's never been funny. Now he's just yeah, an he's awful not. human being. But while Dane Cook isn't liked for his disrespectful and sometimes stolen jokes, Theo Vaughn is hailed for his unusual originality. His sense of humor has been described as so creative, unique, hilarious, and unorthodox that I can't compare him to any other comedian, which summarizes Theo Vaughn perfectly. There's a few guys. Theo's one of them that have like a style of comedy that you will never be able to explain to someone. They gotta go see him. When you hear him say we had this one guy, you know you're about to hear a wild story full of bizarre situations and metaphors described in the strangest yet most perfect way possible. This one gentleman had half a limb and Wh he which, was uh, which limb? He was missing part of his leg I mm -hmm. think. Or he said he was so he could have been faking it. Mm -hmm. CGI or something? I don't know what his name was. <laughs> CJ, it was, no, it was a white dude. Okay, Jack. He's the absolute king of the metaphor. Whenever he says something is kind of like etc., it's always the funniest, most outlandish comparison I've ever heard. You look like a guy if somebody had a cheat code in Double Dragon, bro. <laughs> and they got to use an ultimate character, man. Yeah, Dan Tony. Hey, Amen, dude. Unlocked it. There are multiple compilations dedicated to Theo Von's absolutely wild sayings, although at the same time, he's able to show his soft a more vulnerable side in moments where it's appropriate. Theo's podcast this past weekend has risen to become the seventh okay. most popular podcast on Spotify, while Brennan Schaub's bad reputation has caused his podcast to trend like in the opposite this, this direction. Brennan had previously been a UFC fighter, however, after 
that's why I've seen him. After a string of losses, he was convinced by Joe Rogan and Brian Callen to retire and instead pursue comedy. You have a future in other things and you're really good at it. Like, you're really funny. You say funny shit, man. Yeah, you do. You have a ridiculous talent for that. Although, with comments on Brendan's stand-up like, this is the best example of normal people thinking they're funny because they make their friends laugh, his sets aren't exactly the greatest. His first stand-up special titled You'd Be Surprised received an IMDb rating of 1.4 out of 10 stars and was labelled in front of millions as the worst comedy special I've ever seen. It was so bad that even Joe Rogan made a few little jokes about it. The first one, I would have probably tried to talk you out of it, but I already talked you out of fighting. Yeah. And I was like, I can't talk him out of this too. However, for Brendan, the worst was yet to come. Three yeah. years after his first special, Brendan Shaw released another one titled Gringo Papi, which received an even lower IMDb score of 1.1 out of 10 oh, stars, no. meaning he was unable to sell it to a major buyer like Netflix. Instead, he uploaded the special to his YouTube channel, where it received an 85% dislike ratio and comments such as, Damn, this guy sure has some hidden talent. Hope he finds it one day. Every time Damn. I feel down, I watch Gringo Poppy. Then I realize whatever has me down or whatever adversity I am facing isn't as bad as this comedy special. You know it's a Brennan Schaub stand-up special when the comments are funnier than the actual video. With the stand-up again being labeled as the worst comedy special of all time, it seems Brendan's main problem is that he isn't very skilled, and the audience has therefore been gravitating towards Shane Gillis. He got his big break in 2019 hey, after being cast on Saturday Night Live, which he was then fired from a meeting. Joe did set him up for failure. I will say that. Don't, 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 like, the worst thing it is that you should ever do is have somebody talk you out of your day job. <laughs> please, please don't do that. Because when you actually start doing that and you follow, like, what that person has told you to do, be like, hey, listen, you know, I ain't gonna work at McDonald's anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and be like a comedian or some shit like that. Like, I'm gonna do something big and extravagant. And you end up being not prepared, being worse than you ever was before. It's not good, gang. <laughs> Immediately, after the media dug up controversial comments made on his podcast. And then I got cancelled immediately. You got cancelled on the way. They literally were like, how about this guy? And everyone was like, no. Shane responded by writing, I'm a comedian who pushes boundaries. Sometimes I miss. If you go through my 10 years of comedy, most of it bad, you're going to find a lot of bad misses. But while this made him unsuitable for SNL, this was ironically exactly what the wider comedy audience wanted. No wonder SNL fired him. He's actually funny. This in combination with the mountains of press from the incident took Shane's popularity to a whole new level. The months after SNL, our listenership probably quadrupled because then people heard about it and watched it. So it's helped the podcast. Like, this is actually funny. Yeah. So it's helped the podcast. Tremendously. Only made crazier when he'd post his live set in Austin. If y'all see me like looking over, this is to check on Shadow. You know what I'm saying? Right? Right, Shadow? Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Now, I'll let you back out when it is that you have used the litter box. So when my cat is in heat, whenever she starts, like, looking around and she start like, you know, doing a little bit too much of a pacing, I know she got to use that damn litter box. You ain't, you ain't about to fool me. Austin, which gained over 20 million views by touching on funny political topics, although in a good way where it felt like he didn't have an agenda. And I don't want to be on the other side of it, where it's like, I'm a free speech guy. It's like, dude, I don't want to be involved in any of this. I right. just want to do comedy. Shane's great attitude and likable personality has made him the most subscribed person on Patreon with around 75,000 paid members, in comparison to Carrot Top, whose style was so unique the whole industry turned oh, no. against him. He gained popularity as a prop comic in the 90s, but while his shows were extremely smart and absolutely hilarious. OJ Simpson's football. Okay, go deep, honey. Go deep. Go, get, get. His bizarre look and style made him a punching bag for anybody and everybody. You're a funny guy, man, and you oh, take you, you at least used to take a lot of shit. And I, I, I never understood. I it. never under. I, I don't either. I never have. I would get shit for everything. It's like Nickelback. This became most obvious when Carrot Top simply yeah. flew over his city in a fighter jet. And the next day, on the front page of the paper, Carrot Top disrupts city with flyover. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's up in arms because this, the the building shook and everybody yeah, was like. Sure. Oh, what? There's a war happening. <laughs> and 
I think, I think they were really, honestly, just pissed because it was me. And in a Reddit thread talking about him, the only reasons people had to hate Carrot Top was he's annoying, not funny, and comes across as a gigantic douchebag, which pretty much confirms the theory. Carrot Top's name has become synonymous with bad comedian we should make fun of. In another article, Carrot Top was described as the most successful comedian no one will admit to liking, with one of these haters being another comedy legend. So it's Bill Burr just going coals on me. I mean, just right? <laughs> I mean, just bad. Who then apologized to Carrot Top after meeting him in person. And then when I finally meet him, he was like, yeah. dude, I am so sorry. Like, Welcome he came hug me. And Carrot Top was hated for so long that he's now considered a legend. They're kind of like saying, you know what? Jeez, we, we, he won't go away. We've been ripping <laughs> on him, but he's, he's, for some reason, he's still around. And, uh, you know what? Like, he can stay now. You had somebody earn my wings. With Bobby Lee having earned his wings in a similar kind of way. One of the things that makes Bobby Lee so likable is his ability to laugh at himself for the sake of audience entertainment. Bro, you're the worst looking of all of us. <laughs> what do you think he is out of 10? For real. You're a two, buddy. Two, buddy. <laughs> You're like a two and a half at most, probably closer to a one and a half. Give me a bigger number. You, okay, okay. You want an honest no, number? No, honest. Okay, okay. You want the honest please, number? Please. I was being generous. It's a one and a half. I'm a one and a half? <laughs> something close to 1.7. Did you say one? Showing that he's comfortable in his own skin. This helps him deliver some of the most savage roasts on the internet. My dad abandoned me, but then I love my mom. <laughs> In your face! <laughs> he doesn't have a dad! <laughs> Although just like oh, Theo Vaughn, his fans also have- I know somebody just who's, whose father is not there, just like, why he had to say that, man? Why he had to say that? Damn. He didn't have to say it like that. Have a lot of respect for how open he is with his addiction issues and sobriety. Right before I was gonna get on the plane, I looked at my girlfriend and said, I'm gonna relapse. When it comes to Bobby Lee's stand-up, a Reddit user wrote, I've seen him do the same set at the comedy store like three or four times, and I nearly cried laughing each time, while another person called it the hardest I've laughed at a comedy show of a decent slate of shows. It seems Bobby Lee finds love from the audience regardless of what he's doing, while the audience has recently been finding many reasons to hate Tom Segura. At the start of his career, Tom Segura was one of the more humble comedians. However, after losing over 50 pounds and building a net worth of 12 million, his ego became incredibly obvious. Uh -huh. He'd begin to joke about the general population by calling them poors. So I've received a remarkable number of messages, countless poor people, about the use of a washcloth in the shower. And, um, you know, it's kind of well known. It's what poors do. However, it quickly became obvious that he wasn't really joking. Every time we talk about, like, a watch or a car, I'll get us, uh, like, a, a bunch of messages from losers that try to tell me that mm -hmm. I'm making them feel bad about their situation. I'm struggling with rent this month. Figure it the f*** out. In October 2023, Tom tweeted about being inconvenienced by American Airlines, and after being called entitled by his fans, Tom responded by stating, all the poors and losers have the same response. Oh, you were inconvenienced? Well, you should accept it. That's what me and my dumb poor family have done for generations. This is why you're poor. Okay, bro. This this is how this is how it is that you be looking at people. May I add, it is shitting on the same people it is that have propped you up and built you up to that twelve million. It is that you are worth crazy work, crazy work. It when you leave out of this world, it is all that money don't go with you. So the fact that like you are very, I've seen I've seen people of all walks of life. It doesn't matter the career that be like this. It's not good, gang. No man, it's for sure. In his next tweet, he'd respond to a fan by simply writing poor, while a third tweet read, the lowest level poors get upset, as they've been trained to do, when you point out they're happy to do what I'm told servant mentality. They don't value time because their time is worthless. You are specks of shit on a washcloth, and washcloths belong in the trash. The rant instantly turned Tom into laughing stock for the internet. Probably not that much money left over for the guys in the booth either. Oh, it's man. all Tom and Christina just running around, <laughs> getting on private 
jets. Uh, making fun of poor people. While others dug deep to find his wealth was likely inherited. It turns out Tom was a trust fund kid. His father was the vice president and chief financial advisor of Merrill Lynch for 25 years until he took over as the vice president and CFA for the Bank of America. His obituary mentions that he was a member of the Quail Valley Golf Club in Vero Beach, where a membership will run you a very modest $85,000 a year, not counting all of the other fees. This led Tom to remove the entire chain of airport tweets and avoid every question that might imply he's rich. What kind of car you have? Which what? What kind? You have cars? Yeah, I How like many cars. cars you got? Oh, 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 but you were saying all that hot shit a second ago. <laughs> oh, I. You right? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what's happening. Tom Segura has no excuse for being a douchebag, given Gabriel Iglesias is substantially richer and is one of the most humble comedians. My God. When you type Gabriel Iglesias controversy into Google, it seems the worst thing he's ever done is pay a fine to a venue for spending too much time recording a Netflix special. Back in 2014, one of these specials was leaked and uploaded to YouTube for free, although instead of issuing a copyright takedown, he'd share the links to his Facebook adding, I can't believe someone posted a direct link to watch my fluffy specials online for free. The nerve. I hope no one shares or watches these before they get taken down, prompting a top comment reading, this is why you're awesome Fluffy, you don't whine about getting pirated, you promote it. Gabriel's nickname Fluffy is a joke about his own weight, which like Bobby Lee shows he's comfortable in his own skin. Although at the same time, Gabriel explained to Joe Rogan that he'd recently lost 70 pounds as a result of following better habits. And it was bad habits habits that led Carlos Mencia to become incredibly hated. The collapse of his reputation began after Joe Rogan wrote a blog post titled, Carlos Mencia is a weak-minded joke thief, which read, the latest and most disgusting joke thief of all is a guy named Carlos Mencia. The really crazy thing is that's not even his real name. He sells himself as being Mexican, but the reality is his real name is Ned Holness, and he's actually half German and half Honduran. The Mexican hook is something he did to integrate himself with the local Mexican population of LA where he started. From here, Joe began calling him Carlos Menstelia before confronting him on stage in an actual comedy club, which was recorded and uploaded to YouTube. It's easy to say you steal shit, but I don't, because I'm not a little bitch. I think that every time you open your mouth and you talk about me, I think that you're secretly in love with me. Despite denying the allegation. Okay, Ned. Carlos was then exposed for stealing from Bill Cosby and Ari Shafia, after which Carlos made the crazy decision to own the fact that he stole all his jokes. His attitude was this, like, yeah, I steal. If I'm in the back of the room, you better watch your material because yeah, I'll take yeah. it, remix it, and make it a hit. From here, almost every comedian destroyed Carlos Mencia. A lot of your material, I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of your material was too similar to Paul Mooney or Bill Hicks. And he went from performing in stadiums to small clubs. There's a heavy price to pay for cutting corners in comedy, whereas Chris Rock discovered there's much to gain in the power of a single slap. I go back and forth over if, you know, with Chris Rock. Sometimes it is he's cool, and other times it is I find him annoying. Now, I will say this, though. I will say this. The skit of the one time a white person could say nigga is a classic skit. He has that, but you know, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know, you know, I, side eyeing, side, side eyeing. Chris Rock has been admired and respected since the mid-1980s, although it seems being slapped by Will Smith made him even more loved. Ironically, the Will Smith slap made Chris a beloved winner. Will Smith accomplished the impossible with one targeted slap. Now everybody loves Chris. This was reinforced yeah, when Dave crazy. Chappelle was attacked on stage, after which Chris Rock jumped on the mic to ask, Is that Will Smith? Chris Rock just proved that if someone does you wrong in life, this is why it is that I give him a side eye. You, you went through all of that for a whole year, throwing the subs at, at Will Smith, and just for the skit to even talk about the situation, you were still disrespectful as fuck. So I, I really just don't understand.
life just wait and the perfect moment will present itself. Proud of Chris Rock, he didn't let the Will Smith incident take him to a place of bitterness and anger, but stays humble and even makes a joke out of such a difficult spot to be in. There could not have a more perfect moment to drop that line, and the fact that Chris Rock wasn't really talking about the altercation before leading up to this just adds to the perfection of his delivery. He actually was talking about it, but okay. And when Chris Rock did address the controversy in his special, he reinforced a winner's mindset. But I'm not a victim, baby. You will never see me on Oprah or Gail. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And I love men in black. No, and I took that hit like Pacquiao. All right, bro. All right, bro. See, this is what I'm talking about. I'm like, eh. And just like that, she's in the litter box, you know? I, that's why it is almost kind of, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of side-eyeing. I'm kind of side-eyeing because it's like, all right, bro. Okay. Hey, right, listen, shout out to Sunny V2. Very interesting video, W video to say the least. You know, I heard Shadow before. Yeah, Sh Shadow, had, you know, I know her very well. When she starts walking around and lo looking and scoping scenery out, I know it is she got to use that litter box. So I just put her in the crate. You know, I'll let her back out once it is that she's done. But, but yeah. But shout out to you, Sunny V2. Shout out to y'all in the chat. And shout out to you at home. I will catch y'all in the next video.